All right. Boom. So now we have building a TCP server for HTTP. <coughs> and instructions for what to do. So we listen, TCP 8080. And, uh, and then if we get, right, we get a listener, we'll defer the close. And then once we have that listener listening on TCP port 8080, we accept any uh, connections that come in, we get a connection, then we launch that connection into its own go routine. And so that could continue looping and being ready to receive another connection. And so handle will defer closing that connection. And then we have reading the request and writing to the request, writing the response. And so to read the request, we get a buff IO new scanner and we scan that connection. So we get our scanner. And then we loop, because that's what scanner scan does. It'll return false when there's nothing else to scan. And for each token, right, by default, it's a line. We read that line. And then if i is equal to 0, so i right here is 0, so that's going to be the request line, right? Because as we loop through the lines that came through, Right? We're going to loop through the lines that come through. The first line is the request line. And so we have strings.fields length 0. So the very first one is going to be the method. Because the request line, the first thing in the request line is the method. And so right here we're saying, look, take that line and strings.fields splits the string around each instance of one or more consecutive white space characters. So it's splitting this up on white spaces. And it, get, it returns a slice of string. And I'm saying in the first index position of that slice, which it returns right here, that gives me a slice. Now give me index position 0. So you could access things in a slice by index position. And so if I have a slice of something, I could access things by index position. Index position 0 is going to be dog. Index position one is going to be cat. Index position two is going to be bird. So what I'm doing here is strings.fields gives me back a slice of string, all the words. I get that slice of string, and I'm saying, give me what's in the first position, which is going to be my method. So I'm going to print out my method. And if the line is equal to nothing, headers are done. And I'm going to break out of this loop. And every time I'm going to I++ to kind of loop through the lines. Seems like this would stop anyhow. I don't know why I'd need that because it'd be false. There's nothing left to scan. Um, and then the response, I'm going to respond to my connection with this body. And I'm going to write back some headers. So the first one is going to be my response line, status line, and the status line, the status line is the HP version, the code, and the reason. So HP 1.1, the code is 200, and OK. And those codes can all be found in Godoc net HTTP. You have all your codes right here. Status OK, 200. Be an awesome license plate. Nobody has it.
and no pictures of it at least. Uh, like redirects are like the 300s. Um, 400s like an error. So like if we go to greatercommons.com forward slash nothing here. 404. <laughs> Page not found, right? So these are errors. And then uh, these have all these status codes. So what's the status of what's happened? There's this one, 418. It's a status teapot. is a joke. So you could go to google.com. And I think it's a teapot. And it returns 418. I'm a teapot. Isn't that funny? A little Google Easter egg. The requested entity body is short and stout. Tip me over and pour me out. Um, there is also a Twitter 420 status code at one point. So if you bug Twitter too much, they would send back a, a HB 420 which is basically like, why don't you go smoke a joint and chill out? <laughs> I don't do that stuff. That was Twitter. Twitter points joints. I guess so. Twitter. Um, so uh, I'm going to write back the status line and then some headers, content length, and I'm getting the length of the body, which here's the body of what I'm passing in, this text. It's HTML text. And then content type is text HTML. And there's my carriage return line feed, which is part of the spec. You need that. And then I need this final carriage return line feed to make sure it's done. So my status line, carriage return line feed, feed after my uh, reason phrase. Um, and I guess after the headers, you do that too. So here's the one after that one. And then uh, my connection, I write my body, right? So after my headers are done, after my headers are done, headers, I include my body. That's kind of dope. Like at a TCP level, we're kind of breaking it out, what is happening with the request and the response. And, uh, you know, we're handling a request and we're getting information from it. And then we're writing a response. So let's see it run, shall we? <coughs> and uh, what are we in? This is a uh, five? No. Where are we? I think we're in 15. No, we're not. We're in 16. I guess we're in 05. That's not it. Which file was it? Uh, oh, it's uh, zero 01. Yeah, that's it. So this is running at uh, localhost 8080. And it wrote back hello world. Because right here, I asked it to write back hello world. Right there. And if I look at my terminal, like here is the request that came in. And it told me my method is git. Right? Like I was able to pull that out 
in my code. And then it also asks for a fav icon. Like my browser asks for a fav icon. Do you have a fav icon? And the fav icon is this deal right here. This little logo right there. Those little logos. That's a fav icon. All right, so uh, we're going to see this built all the way here in a second in the next videos.